Let's let's bring in Kristen Megan. What do you think? Yeah, she ready? Yeah, she's ready. Let's bring her on. I'm uh, I'm calling her right now. In theory, I've actually never called a guest. Yeah, it's, I, I hope if it actually worked out, it, it'd be so much better. If uh -huh. It actually worked out this way. Kristen, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we it is the uber sexy Kristen Megan, fresh off of her speech from the Atlanta. Liberty Fest, Atlanta Music Liberty Fest. I'm, I've, I've got some corrections there. Kristen, how are you? I'm good. I'm just I'm dying from my allergies from that Georgia pollen we were in. Mm hmm That's what happens when you come down to the south. We, it just the south fights back. You you popped open the James. <laughs> <laughs> you popped open the Jameson yet? <laughs> Not yet, but you know I need it though. Like I'm. Well, I had this drink that I called Jonathan. I named it after a bartender, and it's a shot of Makers and a shot of Kahlua. And I tell you what, it could cure cancer, so uh -huh. I need some. We do a shot down here called a Ray Charles shot. And, uh, what happens is you pour a bunch of shit. No, no what happens is they, the bartender hands you three pieces of ice, and then you close your eyes, and you throw each piece of ice at the bar, and whatever the hell bottles those three pieces of ice hit, that's what you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put a lot of on my Zima. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're Zima. See, I knew it. I knew you were a Zima queen. Yep. Z we're taking shots at Boone's farm. Though. Okay, so Kristen, both Ben and I, or actually I said neither Ben nor I, are very up to date on these chemtrail things. And In fact, I would say... Uh, as far as historically speaking, Ben is far more versed than am I, but as far in general, but on these chemtrail things, I've I've done I'm a novice at best. I'm a level two novice at best and he's worse. He's even more of a critic. And I told him that I saw you as soon as I got back. In fact I texted him before I got back from Atlanta that I saw your speech and like he needed to kinda of look into this shit. So And I did and I was extremely impressed. I, I think I had just never seen it. Uh, presented by a credible source before. And so I, I, I think the way I want to ask you is, um, is this shit real? Oh, it most definitely is real. And you know what? I was kind of like you. Um, and here's the thing, first of all, before I go into this thing, you know, I, I have to do my rant to kind of please, explain yes, to how I got here. <laughs> please do remember this is completely uncensored. Yeah. You say. You know, I'm excited. Yeah. I am so excited because, you know, I do a lot of media, and I have to say I'm so excited that I do not have to worry about dropping the F-bomb because I swear like a sailor. Yeah, it lowers my blood fuck. pressure. <laughs> we, we have a character on this show called Cunty McDougal Jesus, so you can go awesome. <laughs> you do, it, okay, do your so, thing. All right. So basically, I know that this speech kind of went viral in the first few days. So that, of course, pulled out all the trolls. I mean, trolls from who knows where, government-funded disinformation sites. I don't know. Even a few people that I used to work with, which is kind of sad to see. And I've seen some awesome slander occur over my name. But, you know, what? we all know when you put yourself out there, it comes with the territory. I mean, shit, people tell me I have a big forehead and buck teeth and big ass. I don't give a shit. I don't care, you know. That's not what this is about. So people attack me as a person or my appearance and just totally do not refute what I'm saying. I've heard I'm a paid actor. Um, what else? Oh, I was never in the military. Um, after I left the military, you know, I was a civilian, and uh, which is kind of high up there as a GS-12, and people will refute that, you know. Or, and I could easily show my pay stubs. I could show my DD-214. But at the end of the day, the people that I show that to are people that, I've been involved with in documentaries and other things. And it just, it is astonishing to me that these freaking trolls who've trolled this video for like the last four days and all they can do is say, where's your proof? Where's that? Where's those documents you talked about? First of all, how fucking stupid do you think I am to give a bunch of trolls some information that I have? Now, to clear up these rumors where people are threatening me, I didn't steal any documents. I didn't steal any classified documents. My documents are the proof in which I was threatened by my higher-ups that if I didn't shut my mouth, they were going to try to have me put into a mental hold. And um, that's the documentation that I have. And I also have documentation that I can't go into because I have people who would throw under the bus right now who are asking. And that's really all I can say about that is. 
But I'm sure you guys have had your trolls and you've been attacked. And at the end of the day, I just want to get out there that I don't give a flying fuck what these people think about me. Because who in their right mind would, quote, make this up? I mean, if I wanted attention, I'd make my own sex tape or something, you know? I wouldn't go out and say, oh, you know, chemtrails. So this is what happened with the video. I think there was a lot of misconstrued information. I was trying to tell a story about what happened to me while I worked in government and why I became an activist, why I got into, you know, citizen journalism and things like that. So I was explaining that when I was in Oklahoma City, I saw the constituents using chemtrails on system, approved through a computer system. And then I went into the story about how when I was at a different base, I stumbled upon a process where people were getting sick. And I think people tied that to the chemtrails. It was completely different. You know, my job was to track exposures on base. And if we find exposures, we correct them. You know, you engineer them out and you give people, like, respirators and things like that. Well, in this case, it was a different part of the story. And I was trying to tell how, um, I mean, these limits, I mean, whew, red flag for OSHA, right? So basically, I was threatened and given paperwork to not talk about it, which was about the dumbest thing ever, because I'm not someone that you really want to threaten. Um, so basically, I just want to clear that up, because the title of the video that was uploaded was Chemtrail Whistleblower. Now, yes, I did leave the military as a whistleblower, but it was not in regards to chemtrails. However, I do speak about chemtrails, and I have for years. That's why this is, like, blowing my mind that it's caught this attention, because it's nothing new that I've said. Right, and your speech specifically was about carcinogens, correct? It, it really wasn't yeah. about chemtrails at, at that particular speech. But you were, yeah, I mean, you were, dis I mean, you were honorably honor discharged. Honorably discharged. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I can show you two gentlemen offline my DD-214. Obviously, there's that just sucks. too much stuff to black out on there. I don't want to public publicize it. But, yeah, I was honorably discharged. It happened to be that when I was, I was due to reenlist, Ten days before all this stuff happened, like the threat came down. Mm -hmm. So normally when you're about to separate, it happened to be right when my extension on my, on my enlistment was up. Um, so, I mean, I talked to legal. I got an attorney and I got out quick. And normally you, get, you have to like go through all these classes to transition to civilian life. And I was like, dude, don't write me an award. Don't, don't give me an evaluation. Get me out. Get me out. So I got out with no job, no nothing. I just knew their threats were serious. So I ran. Real quick, Kristen, could you maybe back up just a little bit from from uh, your microphone to your phone because we're getting a lot of uh, popping. Yeah, a lot of plosive popping. Dude, just, is that better? Just, yeah, that's much better. Much much better. Much much better. I actually I have. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it keeps bouncing on my face. That didn't sound good, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got a load of family who. Um, I, I lived a lot of years in San Antonio, Texas. Of course, that's a big military town. And I have a load of family who's in various military regimes. <laughs> and the Air Force <laughs> is one of them. And uh, why why aren't more people coming forward? Are they just not as uh, outspoken or not as brave as you? What, what's, what's the deal with that? Uh, you know what? I think here's the thing. Um, in my career field... I think that now maybe people will start connecting the dots if they start knowing what to look for. But honestly, I think you'd have to be looking for it to notice it. Mm -hmm. um, and in other career fields in the military, oh, my gosh, I get emails, messages all the time from people from the Navy talking about, uh, I think it's pronounced Takamo, uh, aircraft they've caught doing it. So I have other people from different branches coming forward and talking to me, but you know, I understand it's easy to judge, like, okay, if you know you're, if you're supporting an organization or government which does horrible things, but, you know, I've been there. It's hard to say, oh, just get out because some people, you know, they're in a financial bind or they have a family and they're scared, so they don't come forward. Right. Um, for I, me, I, I had no choice. <laughs> Kristen, I, I'm kind of in, sort of in the same boat as far as being in a strange position, uh, wanting to come out and yet not quite being able to. Um, just do it. You'll feel so much better. Well, I did, and they got me in a lot of trouble on New Year's Day of this year. I, I pulled a little stunt, and <clears throat> I work in the oil field, uh, the West mm -hmm. Texas oil field, and I, I, I became aware of the property seizures in uh, of private property within the state of Texas, and I, I saw some things that bothered me. I filmed some things, and I posted on YouTube, and I essentially metaphorically po uh, punched one of the biggest oil producers square 
in the fucking eye. And, uh... Where the hell did you get that, Farmer? I'll tell you sometime. Okay, hide that from the camera. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I've... I, I I was speaking out and I, I got a lot of criticism, but I did go out and get a lot of support. And ultimately, I've come to the conclusion I, I wish I my nutsack was as uh, lined with gold the way yours is. Or <laughs> that it was a horrible metaphor. I, I'm going to <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to visualize that one. That, that go was on. horrible. <laughs> I did, okay, I wish I had the bravery ultimately that you do. I went as far as I could. And I got, at best, maybe half a dozen supporters. I was hoping to get uh, 10,000 yeah, well, times more of that. I just wasn't able to get there. This is what I, I keep trying to tell you about people from West Michigan. People from West Michigan are very similar to people from Texas. I have a whole hey, I'm from West Michigan. I know. <laughs> I have a whole, me and my buddies up there have a whole Texagander army theory that if uh, people from West Michigan and people from Texas decided, all right, we've had enough, we're just going to go do our own thing, uh, we'd you know we'd be in, we'd take over Des Moines in in a, in a week. What are they going to do? Fight us with their broom corn? I don't know what they do in Iowa. The Monsanto corn, I hear it's like Kevlar, so you might want to watch it. Oh, it's just, it might. <laughs> Monsanto corn shoots back. Yeah, they 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 breed it with crocodile skin. Mm -hmm. It's very tough. Yeah, so I spend a lot of time in West Michigan. I, I mentioned that to you the other night on 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 the old face space, and I, I wonder if if you think. If you think there's a there's a growing revolution of, of people in uh, particularly West Michigan, Texas, I mean there's people all over the country, but you you can see these pockets of liberty minded folks, and it's is it more of a culture thing? I think it's more of a culture thing. What an awful question that was. I just no, I, you know it's funny you say that because when I was in the military, I swear like a huge percentage of people I met were either from Michigan. Texas or Florida. Like, that was like the three primary states. Hmm. And I don't know, maybe it's something about we're all peninsulas or, you yeah. know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Outskirts, I don't, I don't know either. Plus, uh, our, our states all look like body parts. Maybe that's it. Okay, well, hang on. You're, you're, you're getting a little silly now. <laughs> I've got, I do have a question. What is an industrial hygienist? Well, have you heard of OSHA? At all? Yeah, we, we oh, were yeah. threatened by them daily. Uh, yeah, daily. Okay. Uh, yeah. So when you think of like a safety person, you know, you think of like those people that are worried about electrical hazards, slips, trips, falls, things like that. Well, an industrial hygienist covers the health side. So let's say you were like working in an oil field. I would go out on air sample to make sure you're not inhaling any volatile organic compounds. I'd make sure that you didn't have any hazards associated with contact to your skin, ingestion, um, inhalation, radiation, noise, ergonomics. Okay. So okay. A health, the health portion of OSHA. It's like pre-med kind of, not pre-med okay. in like that sense. But full, disclosure, full disclosure, in my line of work, servicing Caterpillar diesel engines on drilling rigs for the past 20 years, Just, I'm just being brutally honest. We, we call you safety people. Uh, we, we, we make fun of y'all <laughs> out here. Uh, oh, yeah, but I'm not safety. <laughs> oh, okay, well... Well, that's kind of what you said, isn't it? No, you it's different. Make sure that no one's physical. You said you're making... Look, I know there's Nazis out there that enforce this stuff. I do. Oh, okay. There's, okay. there's okay. a delivery method. That's why I've always been respected, and I can talk to people. You know, okay, some people... So, so don't you don't like enforce it. it. You simply analyze the data, uh, whatever potential yeah. carcinogens, potential uh, H2S poisoning. You just simply analyze it and present the facts. Basically, um, yeah, I do. It's called analyzing, recognizing, and evaluating the hazard and then controlling it. So okay. whether you are wearing earplugs to control it or right. I'll give you a prime example. One thing, uh, okay, you're working around oil and solvents, right? So if you're working around hazardous noise, I'm sure they gave you earplugs, right? I provide my own. It hurts okay, my so ears, here's the thing so about I, that. I, I plug them in because I don't like to, I, I want to have my hearing. A half-ass safety or industrial hygienist person wouldn't know that not only is, you know, you work around most industrial tools, it's hard on your hearing, but there's also something called autotoxicity, where the inhaling of certain chemicals affects your inner ear. So you have a systemic effect. If you're getting hit with vibratory motion or hazardous noise and you're inhaling this stuff that affects your inner ear nerve, then you're, like, double fucked, you know? So, okay. yeah. 
I like what I do. It's it's like problem solving. It's like the well, MacGyver I, I of health. I love problem solving. I like getting high on spray paint, so <laughs> I, I, I don't wear a mask. No, that explains a lot. Yeah, do we do, do that right lot? before we sign on for the show. Yeah. We we huff a bunch of spray we, paint. We turn the spray cans upside down <laughs> so the solids don't come out, and we yeah we <laughs> snort up the <laughs> the propellant. Is that bad for us? Is that bad for us? <laughs> it is bad for you, actually. Oh. It affects your central nervous system, so. Oh, I don't want that anyways. <laughs> you know what, though? I feel like I need to go back and answer your original question about chemtrails because for the trolls that are listening, they'll say that I purposely evaded the question. Oh, you, oh do not so, evade the chemtrails question. Tell us what you know. I, we what I know sorry. is, so let me clear this up for all the fucktards out there that just oh. like to spew false information. Wow. Once again, I saw the materials on system. And I got to be aware of chemtrails by reading things online of pictures that were people were taking. Because in Oklahoma City, have you heard of um, the documentary in Noble Lie about yes. Oklahoma City bombing? Yes. In fact, uh, one so, of the producers came down to my event, or my Ben and my event, uh, Liberty Fest West, uh, Lane. Um, always going to kill me. Was it Chris Emery or somebody else? No, it wasn't Chris Emery. Uh Oh, I'm gonna. I'm hating myself right now. I can't remember his name. You know, but you know of the film, correct? Absolutely, I've, I own it. Okay, awesome. So do I. Um, but basically, there's a lot of people in like James alternative Lane. media. Okay, James that, Lane. I'm sorry. That sorry I talked to. to. Okay. No, it's okay. Um, but basically, I've studied all this stuff about who I used to think were conspiracy, you know, conspiratards as they're called. <laughs> um. And I would see the pictures, and it seemed like around the country, like Oklahoma City was like the main area people were seeing all this stuff, from Tulsa to to um, to Norman and all these other things. So I tried to debunk it myself, and I'm like, God, these people are like disrespecting what I do for a living, you know? Except in an attempt to debunk it, I couldn't disprove it. And then when I saw the chemicals on system. And then I started doing my own sampling. And for those people that are like, how are you tying what's in the air down to the ground? Well, if you know how to study weather and um, dissipation rates of materials based on its weight and things like that, I mean, and, you and can clue you model. I've, you know how to do that. So You specifically mentioned in your speech in Atlanta uh, aluminum being one of a, a naturally occurring element. And then there's two more. What were those called? Um, strontium and barium. Now... Okay. Strontium and barium as bare constituents are part, they can be found naturally occurring earth, but not in the compounds in which I sample for. See, that's another thing that people ran off with. Oh, my God, she's an idiot. She doesn't know her chemistry. Yes, I do know my chemistry. If you want, if we were on video, I'd show you my freaking transcripts. But anyway, um, the compounds in which I sampled, like there are multiple, it's like people want to say strontium. Okay, well, there's strontium chromates. I mean, there's uh, different forms of metal compounds that are altered through industrial processes. So what the panels that I sampled for in my soil grids were not just for bare aluminum and, and bare strontium and, and, and barium. It's so much more than that. But again, all this information I've given to key people, you know, that are working on some things. So, but yes, the thing is, is that every area... There's things called PNAs, polynuclear aromatics, things in soil. And depending on where you live, there's higher backgrounds. In Oklahoma, there's a lot of clay, so it's a little different. However, the background <laughs> that I picked up, this was so far above background. And the thing is, I didn't just go off of my data. You know, I networked with tons of other people um, who were, quote, conspiracy tards in the area. And we were all getting the same things. And here's the thing, people. This stuff is global. I mean, I have people from, like, Scandinavia and countries, you know, I didn't even know existed, <laughs> contacting me saying, you know, I'm a geologist. We're getting the same stuff here. You know, thanks for speaking out. I mean, here, here's what I don't so, And I just don't understand how difficult this is for people to connect the dots. I'm going to put on my skeptic hat real quick. So if I get a little rough on you, I apologize. But... I, what what is the incentive for these government agencies or, the, or whoever is doing this? What's their incentive for doing this to the population? You know, I have no proof on that. 
at all, but I do have some opinions um, from all the studies that I've done. One can be if you study um, the infamous Monsanto and you study all their genetic modifications and what their seeds are resistant to match the items used in chemtrails. And if you look at what Monsanto is doing, killing the average small farmer, and you see that basically your shit's not going to grow unless you have these, quote, Monsanto slash geoengineering or chemtrail resistant seeds. Right, and I'm and then when you, I actually, my family, my, you know, of course, my last name is Farmer. <laughs> There's a good reason for that. We, we've owned farms for as long as history, I suppose. And uh, we, we still do have a, a, a medium-sized family farm just south of Oklahoma City. And, yeah, you don't have to tell me about the evil Monsanto Corporation. No, that's something we, we deal with. Okay, Megan, I, I, I do have another question. Are you, are you familiar with the documentary, What in the World Are They Spraying, and also the, uh, the, the sequel, Why in the World Are They Spraying? Yes, and I'm actually a part of the third one. Oh, is there a third one? Is it where in the world are they spraying? Um, I can't speak on it, and I know that they've okay, actually understood. talked about it, but I think it's going to be more of who who is spraying. Okay, I've um, seen, I didn't see the first one. I did see the second one, and to answer Ben's question, he asked why, and this is strictly a novice answering on, uh, on what I've seen. Uh, it gets into as far as <clears> – <throat> it, could, it could go as far as futures trading. Futures trading yeah. – Wheat and bushels of yep. you know, whatever, because you, you put you you can't you know make a, a a jet stream all of a sudden go the other direction, but you can steer it. And they've got this you know the heart crap and the chemicals they can put in. Heart, what a heart crap! What is that? Heart. H a h a a r p. Uh, Kristen probably knows better than what. The, uh, I, I don't I don't I do not remember what it means. Kristen, do you know by chance what the harp stands for? It's somewhere in Alaska, I believe. Um, yeah, hold on just a second because maybe if I can pull this up. Are you pull that you, up? I'm going to keep blabbing a little bit, but essentially they. No, because I, I got a, I got in contact with somebody who used to work with Hart that reached out to me. So ah, oh, very was kind good. Of, well, uh, essentially, I mean, they they can prevent rain here. from falling before it in a certain on the say on the west coast mm -hmm. and make more rain fall in the west coast. You you create they the powers that be. You can create droughts in certain areas. Loss of crops, devaluation of land. Well, everybody's broke except for who? Ding, 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 ding. Very wealthy individuals that are in the farm business, known as Monsanto. It'd just be Monsanto. Well, well they're you know, the old saying is you know follow the money. And when you when you see that this is something yeah. that can be profited off of, it says a lot. But you know, I hadn't even heard about Harp until I saw like an episode of Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura. Um, but basically it's using, uh, like EMF or RF to steer nanoparticles of metal yes. in the sky. And, and I'm not even claiming to be a harp expert cause I'm not, but that is another thing you that I have seen with harp. more sexy than I said it. <laughs> well, it's this, it's this 1-900 allergy voice that I have. <laughs> I'm just relaxed. I'm talking about Kim Drails right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, there is a lot of different theories. I mean, I could tell you one of my theories. Um, you know, I'd, I had mentioned to you earlier um, about autotoxicity, about there's some chemicals that you can breathe in or, or that you can have ingested in your body that don't just affect certain parts of your body, but also your inner ear and your balance. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a lot of research on how this all ties into, you know, quote, Agenda 21. So if you look at what's in our vaccines from mercury, formaldehyde, aluminum, um, a bunch of carcinogenic metals and constituents, hazardous materials, and the effects of the items used in vaccines as preservatives, um, you mix that in with what's being used in chemtrails, and you have a massive autotoxic systemic effect. And if you look over, like, the last 20 years, and I talked to a lot of people about this. What are you laughing at? Nobody's laughing. No, that, that, that's uh, that's my oh. gay cat puss uh, shaking, shaking her collar. Yeah. Oh. 
I'm sorry. I was like, what the hell? Did I miss something? No. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I do have a gay cat, and she's... she's really <laughs> so do I. I have a gay she's cat. a male cat, by the way. She is a male cat. She's almost transgender. It's a long <laughs> story. You know, I'll about it. I'm all for it. Mm. No, but, but, but anyway, besides your gay cat, my point was is that what's in our food, what's in our vaccines, and what's, what's being sprayed upon us, I think... It's not a coincidence and that it could be tied to the whole population control. And I know people are like, oh, my God, that's a crazy conspiracy. But if you look up Agenda 21, it's right in front of your, your face. So, I mean, I don't understand why people just think this is such a hard thing to grasp. But that is my opinion, is I think it, it ties to controlling population. And, it, and people have found other ways to benefit off this, from controlling the crops, like you said, making money off trade. I'm, I, those are my personal opinions. That leads me to my next question. You said in your <clears throat> in your speech that you are in charge of these, uh, the aluminum and the bromide or whatever you whatever, whatever these chemicals were. Do you <laughs> or did you see firsthand of these massive chemicals coming from these uh, nameless companies actually loaded up into like a seven forty seven, a commercial jet, or even a an Air Force jet? Did you see the actually see the chemicals being loaded up in there? Where, no, you know, and I never claim to see them go onto aircraft. What okay. I did see is the mass quantities Coming of these in. materials. And the thing is, is that okay? So when you would approve these chemicals, yeah, we, in my job we would tie them to a quote called a case file. So like a shop or a place had it like an identity code, and these weren't coded. And you know there was some classified areas on base that even for us. Like, we couldn't go in, you know. It was, like, need to know. But the problem is, is some people want to, quote, debunk me and say, oh, these same materials she's talking about are used in industrial processes, like stop painting and bead blasting. No, the fuck they're not. You do not need this much material <laughs> to do blasting inside of a hangar or a bl blasting box. So, I mean, how much I mean, are we talking, are we talking about? Megatons or yes, can, can you quantify oh, it? And the, and the ordering of it was way too frequent. But at the time, see, if I had balls back then, I would have I would have questioned it on the spot. But I, it's for me, it just validated my investigation. And you know, and here's another thing: when I was giving my speech, not to mention I was already like two drinks in, maybe three or four. But anyway, yeah, I, I think I, we're I, six <laughs> at this point. I, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, I cannot drink most men, so you won't even know when I've been drunk. But anyway, I mentioned in there that when I first found this out, I wanted to get out, but I was pregnant with my daughter. And I don't know why the fuck I said that, because I was, like, discombobulated. Yeah. I wasn't pregnant with my daughter at that time. I was going through a divorce and a shitty custody battle with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I was like, oh, my God can't leave you know i'm in a freaking financial bind so that's another thing i need to clean up because people are like she's a paid actor she's saying her nine-year-old daughter was born in 2007 um i, I did notice that and i believe i i've i've misspoke many times in fact uh i misspoke last week and when whenever hart sawyer comes on here i've got i've got some corrections to <laughs> it happens it really happens you get a, a slight date mixed up. I got I got my ass reamed in my first divorce because I mixed up two of my kids' uh, birthdays. <laughs> the last three are all three born in June, two years apart. But he has like seven kids. So, I mean, eventually you don't even know their names at some point, I would think. Damn, Octo Dad. Shit. No. Yeah. He's trying to out another, another, status. <laughs> another thing, too, is that, not that it matters, but all the trolls were saying, I was like, I get paid. I, don't, I never take compensation to speak about this stuff. I wasn't paid. As why a matter not? of fact, God damn, I, didn't, I didn't even rehearse that speech. I pulled that out of my ass because, well, I pulled it out of my heart because I told Barbie Dunn before I went on, I was like, Barbie, I know what direction I'm going, and God, I hope I don't cry because it's an emotional story to talk about because people don't realize how much scrutiny I was going under um, at the time I separated <laughs> But that was completely from my heart, like off the cuff. So I don't give a shit about people saying, oh my God, she lied. No, she must not be real. 
But yeah, I don't get compensated when I speak about this stuff. And the reason that I don't is because I don't want to give people a reason to say that I'm doing this for money. Uh, oh, fuck them. Those people are going to say fuckers. that no matter what. Gonna say, you're going yeah, to, I make really good money. You've in created a, a, oh. you have become this massive person. You've created yourself to be this stellar person, up to, uh, upstanding person. And you've put a gigantic target, like you said in your speech, on your back. And the higher you go, the more trolls you're going to get. Exactly. Ben and I, we've been on the radio a mere six months. And our troll <laughs> itch has gone from like a minus five to over the top ten. I've actually had to start blocking people on Facebook. I've started having sex. Uh, so have I. I. Yeah. Ben has started having sex with the trolls. That's how mm-hmm. bad. Just to get them to go away. Yeah. Well, that's the easiest way to get someone to go away from me is to have sex with them. <laughs> yeah, but fuck like, we'll leave well, a- you might get for my trolls. Most of them are guys, though, I think. So I, oh, I don't think whatever. <laughs> okay, well, we will be doing this, right? and you, you you can just feel free to just pass this along to them and tell them to go eat their chones, and you have backup. Yeah, well, when you have trolls, though, you know you're doing something correct. And, and, and what you said was they're not attacking your ideas. They're atta- They're doing the ad hominem attacks. They're attacking you personally. Exactly. Yeah, that's how you automatically. It kills them that I won't. It kills them that I won't reply, and they take that as like a mission of guilt. But really, it's it's yeah, exactly. once you you know when I first started speaking out, and you know I've been doing this for a while, so I know for people after seeing this video, they're like, oh, she's trying to get fame off chemtrails. So fucking Google me. I've been doing media for a while and contributing for a long time. So. This isn't like my claim to 15 minutes of fame, you know? Um, It's just, like I said, this gained the attention of some newer people. But if you give them just a little, like at first, there's this one website I don't even want to mention because I don't want them to move up on the Google search. But they're a bunch of fucktards. All they do is spend, like, their whole life trying to debunk chemtrails and other topics. Kristen, hold that thought Uh quick. Uh, This happens every single show at the end of the hour. We get a bad echo. Uh, We're going to do a a quick hard break. Can you hang on for just a few more minutes? Can we call you right? Yeah. I'd like for you to get some final words. Quick hard break. We'll we'll do a hard, we're going to do a hard break. Call you right back, Kristen. A few seconds. You're listening to Liberty Movement Radio at libertymovementradio.com. All right. Right back. We're back and there. We're, we're going to get, get Kristen back on. Okay, I'm calling right. her right now. I want to give her some final her final thoughts. Are we are we better now? Yep. We are better. I think we're better. I let's think, let's okay, check in with Proctor. We're going to check with Proctor and make sure there's no echo. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we just go ahead and go to break, but that's yeah, because uh, we I, do this through Skype. Well, that and we, I am in love with you now, and I want <laughs> you to have some final thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Go, uh, go okay, on. we're good. Uh, okay. so, so we've got about another uh, eight minutes left. So okay. you're you're good on time. If there's you just get it out what you want to get out to the your critics, to your trolls, okay. to your fans, <laughs> even if you want to get that out as well. Well, you know, I guess the one thing I want to say is for all those people that think I'm misrepresenting myself, I know the video was titled "I Was the Engineer." I was not an engineer. I'm an industrial hygienist and an environmental specialist. I've already cleared that up. Okay. Secondly, chemtrails is just like a percentage of the things that I am passionate about exposing. Due to my profession, which those of those of the the people that were in my career field in the military trying to slander me right now, um, when I left. I continued my education, and I guarantee you I am highly more versed in these things than they are. Um, from, from, my, from my job and my experience working with the government, I see the contradictions in government, like seeing how the TSA doesn't have to follow OSHA regulations with their irradiating porno scanners, how other agencies, you know, like I have a friend in the EPA who acknowledges chemtrails, and he's going to come forward when he retires in about nine months. I mean, I have people... That like are contractors for the government who are geologists that come forward about this. So I don't, I don't care if people think I'm not real. And the point is, is that for all the freaking government people listening, I did Safe. not take any classified documents. <laughs> I stole nothing that was your property. I kept the threats that were written to me. In all of my information, that proves that I was threatened. Please tell me that you I did leave as a whistleblower. Have you? Had, please go ahead. Please tell me you've made hard copies of those written threats. Of course. Good, good. Of course and, I have. And you've distributed them 
in super. Uh, of course, I did. Cool. I sure did. Good well, girl. I did you like store some crazy you, conspiracy loon. I sure did. Okay. <laughs> if you need to store some here behind Ron Paul's face on Mount Rushmore, you're more than. <laughs> yeah, and actually, but my point is, is that like I heard that um, this recent video like made its way to Tink Air Force Base where I used to work, and people are like, "Oh my God, are you afraid?" Is that the no, one? No, I'm not afraid. That's the one where I saw the chemicals on system. Right. In Oklahoma. I'm not afraid because I'm not lying. They can't just. Dis- Prove me. I didn't steal any fucking documents. I'm an educated person who knows how to connect dots so they can go fuck themselves and reread their goddamn constitutions and quit accusing me of being a fucking Bradley Manning, who, by the way, I think is a hero. But anyway, so I want just people to know chemtrails are just a bit of what I'm an activist about. I'm very active in exposing government contradictions in general. I'm a huge advocate for veterans' rights. We prefer, and, um, we prefer making fun of politicians and all government. Exactly. Well... <laughs> I try to give some a chance because I don't think uh, we'll never I not do. have government. I'm, but. I'm I'm smoking what you're rolling. Yeah, yeah. I do ben, the same Ben's thing. more on your line. Uh, I, I made fun or not made fun. I criticize even Robbie Wells. I met Robbie Wells. I know uh, you and many others are friends with him and you promote him, and that's great. I'm not saying he's a bad guy, but I'm I'm just being honest. I don't give. No, I'm there all, with you. I don't and, give and he's probably listening. any slack. <laughs> I, I but even, I always tell him. I'll support I've, I've you. Ron Paul. Have so have I. Okay. Yep, so have I. No person is perfect. I will support you after I vet you. Right. And until you give me a reason. And then when you give me a reason, you don't you don't want to be my enemy. So I, do. I don't stand behind people easily I, in politics. I think you kiss your eternally kiss your ass because I don't want to be your enemy. No, I'm not I'm not a rollover. I'm not just I don't just turn on people and throw them under the bus, you know. You know, I have integrity, so I just want people to know I don't do this for, quote, fame, okay? I, I could have found another route if I wanted to. Yeah, this is all Kim trails are not very popular. They're not going to gain a lot of fame. Yeah. About this is a global freaking issue that, wow. they, you know, they don't deny it. They just don't talk about it, and that's right. the problem. Well, Chris, I'd, but again, like, I'd like to point out ahead. that I, I just lost a bet with Caleb because I said she's from West Michigan. She's going to say yet in an inappropriate, in an inappropriate place, and, and you, you did not do it. You didn't do it the entire time. Now I am. Okay, so so, so so therefore, just, Ben, <laughs> ben is going to. Now I'm going to have to throw $50 on the Liberty throw, Movement radio. Yeah. We're, we're doing a pledge drive because we're all volunteers, and, and we're trying to get our little fledgling radio station going, and I've already pledged the first 50 and we're asking all our Schmohawk listeners, by the way, I don't know how often, if you ever listen to the show, but we are. I do. I do. Actually, yeah, I never mind. Uh, uh, our, we're asking our Schmohawk listeners to uh, just to help it out. We're not going for a hundred thousand dollar deal. We're not going through uh, for a fifty thousand dollars. Five hundred bucks. I contribute the first fifty. We're asking our Schmohawks, and if for ever five hundred, uh, Ben Ben made it on my behalf that I would donate another fifty. But now that you did not say the word yet in an inappropriate, in an inappropriate place. place, he's yeah. going to do. I got to do fifty the, in there. The 50, I so. got to throw fifty in there. Because people from Michigan do that. They say, I need to go to the store yet. <laughs> the yet is not necessary. In that wait, wait, wait. I'm not from the UPA. Uh, well, no, no. That's, yeah, you're not a Uper. <laughs> well, they, that's how they talk. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, they talk like Canadians. <laughs> well, see, I took they the because I simply, simply because I did hear you speak, and I thought, I know how she speaks. She didn't say yet, to the best of my knowledge, in an inappropriate manner. I'll take that fucking bed, so therefore I won. <laughs> I do say um a lot. I do say um a lot. I try to work on that. I always try to work on my speaking, but you know what? If people aren't listening to the content and are so focused on your delivery, even though it's not perfect, I've never taken a speech class. Actually, I tested out of my speech class. Yeah. By just uh, doing a video do, recording, but ben and I do both openly claim to be um, grammar Nazis. We we love criticizing all grammar. <laughs> it's it's kind of shitty. But I am too, but just not on Facebook because my phone fucks me up. So I know, don't judge I know, me. I know, I'm, <laughs> and I'm I'm just busting your uh, ovaries. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one. I, I only have one. Just oh, one. you got rid of the other one. What okay. happened to your other ovary? No, I, I had ovarian cancer in, uh, about five years ago. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I do still have two nuts, but I've had but them. they're snipped. I, I've had them snipped, and I've actually had them sewn back. Well, while we're getting intimate and personal, I, I, I'm right there with you, girl. 
I've had no. My- I always say I'm riding on one wheel. So. <laughs> well, Caleb's nuts have been operated on so many times. I think he's probably sterile. Uh, um, but you're not. Though. That's the problem. Th- there's actually brass inside of there. In fact, <laughs> the next time I do get them cut, I'm gonna say, Doc, just don't snip them. Pluck them. Just pluck <laughs> the sons of bitches. Did you save yours? Is yours in a jar, like on your mantle? Yep. Well, on his still, mantle. They're, they're still in my crotch jar at the moment, but I'm just going to tell him to pluck them next time and throw in a, a set of brass balls and just call it good because I just don't want any more kids. I, I've I've repopulated all I care to repopulate. I just simply do not want any more children. Yeah, but he, he's and, you're, and your kids are gorgeous, by the way. I've seen their pictures. Aww. They are so good looking. They are some good looking you're kids. Gonna, you're breaking my heart. Maybe we should hook up, hook up. You know, one of your. Your kids with my daughter, you know, we can get this liberty movement going. I thought you were about to hit on me on air, and I was going to be flattered. And you're talking about our damn kids. Well, how old is <laughs> how old is your is is your daughter? She's nine. Nine. Well, she'll be nine in in two months, so a, pretty much she's nine. nine year old, yeah. don't you, Caleb? I'm sure I do. You've, you've got a nine year old in there somewhere, right? Uh, Fourteen. <laughs> Okay, they all turn another year older in June, so I'll just pretend it's June. They are 14, 12, <laughs> 10. And eight. London is my eight-year-old. My daughter. Yeah, she's, she's so cute. Yeah, she's my favorite, and I tell her that all the time. I say, London, don't tell your brothers that because they don't know how to take it. But she's the only girl. Hang on, she's the baby. All of your kids' birthdays are in June. What well, the hell was going on in the last uh, September? <laughs> the only Gemini, man. Ever- and I'm a, I'm a June baby too. Oh, you're a, you're a Gemini as the, well. The only three times I ever June 14th flag day, baby. Yep. <laughs> So you have two personalities. Yes, I am sarcastic and I'm a bitch. So <laughs> <laughs> you're not a bitch. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm really nice. I'm I'm very nice. I consider myself a very nice person. However, you're very polite to me. And you and I was an asshole. People. In fact, I owe you an apology. I will fuck you up. I owe, I, you owe, owe I owe you an apology. I was so, well in Atlanta when I met you. Uh, we were all standing out back. And I, I'm very careful about the people who, who come around. If I don't know them, I'm, I'm very cautious. And I, I hadn't – actually, now that I look back, I did know who you were. I just didn't realize who I was talking to at the time. And I owe you an apology. I, I have to be very careful because, you know, you of all people would know how these stalkers <laughs> – these stalkers. Yeah. So, so yes, just, I do. Do you, do you accept my apology? <laughs> Please. I'll accept your apology if you send me your nut in the jar. No. <laughs> Perfect. I, we can make that happen. In oh, like, my God. That's an amazing No, I'm just saying. You know what? I'm the same way. You know, a lot of times, um, well, I'll, I'll meet people at, like, engagements or speaking events that I'm friends with on Facebook that I'm, I'm very close with online, but because their freaking picture is, like, a meme, when I meet them in public, I don't know who they are. So I'm like, who is this person, and why are they talking about my personal life? Like, who are you? So, so yeah, no, I, you, you don't need do to apologize. You have to be careful. You do accept my apology, then? If I give I my nuts, what? Or how do you want my nuts? In a jar. Look, I can't. I don't want to piss you off, and I and I don't. Oh want to my piss God! Off you can't piss me off. Are you kidding me? Because well, you you and I are both friends with Cantwell, and I don't want a fucking meme going around. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. Oh fuck, Cantwell! I'll, 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 I will drop kick him in the next week if he fucks with you. And you can no, hold me. He can be a little abrasive, but I am fully supportive of people who just don't give a shit. So, yep, me too. I mean, more power to you. Well, I'm, I'm going to see him this weekend, and if he tries to fuck with you, you just let me know. I will drop kick that 260 pound overweight comedian motherfucker from hell. Pull his red pubes out. <laughs> I'll yank every yank red out. down to the root. I will, <laughs> I'll take that comedian out. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, we really want to thank you for coming on tonight. You've been an absolute pleasure, and uh, we'd love to have you on again sometime. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'd love to be back, and, hey, I'd love to help donate to the cause because I'm very supportive of this whole alternate radio liberty-minded media. So if you just do me a favor. When Tart comes on, tell her I said hi, okay. and my daughter's, like, in love with her, so... Oh well, that makes and, that makes uh, fourteen thousand of us. <laughs> I know, but here the di- well, you know what? I think if I was a lesbian, I'd want to brush her hair. I think I would. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe braid it. We've covered that. Let's uh, actually let's talk some more about you being a lesbian brushing <laughs> <laughs> parts hair. I know what 
has a little bit of lesbian in them. I think some women are absolutely beautiful. I have loads of lesbian in me. <laughs> okay, we're getting into hard time. We have got to take a hard, a hard a, a I know. Short break. Awesome. Well, Kristen, I don't wanna... what, do you, what do you got coming up, Kristen? You want to plug something? I do have things coming up. I can't plug them. Um, I just want people to know that I've had some things in the works for a while that were already planned before I did this speech. So when some trolls say, oh, my God, she capitalized off her speech. No, by the way, this is planned for months. I have a couple TV things I'm doing, um, documentaries. But mostly, and I do try to stay out of, like, the video realm. I like to contribute as a writer the most. So I have a lot of writings. Um, you know, I do contribute to a lot of different media sites. And Yeah, I'm about so, uh, Please give my best to Gary Franchi and Angie as well and tell them I will be getting a hold of them shortly. Uh, we are just really up against a hard break. we got to let you go. But, Kristen, thank you so very much. And you've got my number. When you need to speak, get your something off your chest. You give me a holler. And, and you know what? You're welcome to call in during black hole hour. That's yes, you absolutely <laughs> are if you'd like. If you want to call in during black hole hour, things get a lot more fun. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, just promise me you'll spring me out of the FEMA camp. So other than that, you guys have a good night. Tell Hardis said hi. We'll do so. Take care, my friend. Thanks, Thanks, Hardis. Are we? Right. 